What's up guys and welcome back. Today I am joined by a very special guest. Oh yes, he's full of love and kisses. Hey, full of love and kisses? This is Obi, also known as Obi-1. Obi, say hi. Obi, say hi. Obi is a little sausage dog, Dachshund. He's a little harlequin. That's why he's so cute and colorful. And I don't know why I'm uh, reviewing my dog right now, but uh, just thought you guys wanted to get to know Obi. He'll be a new member of the vlog very soon, but he wants to go run around and play. Love you. Good boy. All right, enough of Obi. Obi, get out of here. Go play. Go pee on something. Guys, today is a very cool day because today I'm going to do a uh, playing card review, but not only any playing card review. No, sir, we are going to review <gasps> first playing cards. I've been waiting a very, very long time to review these cards. Now I've got the deck, I've got the tuck case, put the two together, obviously, and uh, we're gonna take a look at not only, you know, what these cards are made of, what gaff cards you get, what the jokers look like, what the faces and aces and all that stuff looks like. So without further ado, if you do, you like this content and enjoy this channel go ahead and hit the like button and show your support subscribe if you're new here let's get into it Gentlemen, let's have a look at first playing cards. Here is the tuck design from first playing cards. This is a friend of mine, uh, Abraham uh, Garcia Sanchez, who is an amazing illustrator. He helped me out with the entire deck, with the back design and everything, so thank you to him. These tuck cases were printed by Clove Street Press out in San Diego. Uh, Close Street handles mostly all of uh, Dan and Dave's custom artwork as well for their decks. They do business cards. They also started dabbling in playing cards, obviously. Uh, started off with Dan and Dave, and uh, I really like them. The work that they do is incredible, and I will be using them again on future decks. This here says First Playing Card Co. by Chris Ramsey. Uh, I glued this deck together with some hot glue, which is probably why this seam here is a little large. Uh, they have a much better way of gluing that together and packaging and that won't show as much. So that's it for the outside. Aside from here, once you pop the flap, you get the nice little logo reveal here in gold as well. And on the inside, one of my favorite features of this entire deck is the inside. How the inside is also foil stamped with the repeating first, kind of like a simplistic design. And then uh, let's get into the cards. What uh, the deck should look like when you take it out. Maybe not blank, maybe something else on it. I'm not too sure but I'll show you why. Again, here's the inside of that tuck case. How neat is that? Ooh, baby. So first things first, let's have a look at the back design. The back design on these cards, first of all, the obviously the inspiration for this was first, if for those of you who don't know, it is my first solo project. So the first deck that I did sort of with my own name on it. You know that I'm not working with another company. Yes, I did work with other people on this deck, but this I own the rights to this deck. This is my first very own deck. Um, but also it's kind of a callback to the YouTube community because you guys have been so supportive to me and a lot of times on videos, uh, my channel or other channels, uh, some of the first comments are usually just first. So I thought I'd pay homage to, to that. So these are the first playing cards. Kind of kind of cool saying just first playing cards as in like the first ever. So the back design obviously has these two foil stamped gold firsts all the way to the edge. Uh, makes for some really interesting fan work and spread work. Obviously just makes you want to fan them out. Like if you hold it like this, you can kind of see what this is one of my favorite features of the deck, by the way is uh, this line here when you're not fanning it, when you're just kind of holding it. You can even hold it straight, but if you hold it on a bit of an angle, you get that like gleam, which looks so rad. All it makes you want to do is just go, ugh, just spread, spread the cards. That's all I want to do with these cards is just spread them. You hold them because it naturally you start seeing that line. You want to just kind of, oh, I want to, I want to 
we'll stretch that line out. It makes for some really cool fans, obviously, with that gleam and high-end sort of feel to it. Very, just enough, just enough bling. Just enough bling not to make it go crazy. Doesn't look like you're holding gilded painting from the 1800s. It has a modern feel to it. it has that sort of Louis Vuitton look to it, uh, but at the same time, you know, feels like an ordinary deck of cards. So obviously that is also uh, the back design uh, incorporates the logo. There are no markings on this version. I don't know if I will incorporate markings in the future. And one of the reasons for that is that I don't really use markings when I work. These decks had my sort of style in mind and sort of how I work with cards, which is why it has some other features which we'll get into. It does have a nice subtle sort of goldish yellow line, if I could focus. Goldish yellow line going on the outside all the way around. Just a classic, classy feel on these decks. And that is the back design. Now for uh, for the ad cards, I didn't, I chose not to go with any ad cards and promote myself because I, I chose to put that promotion on the Joker. So the Jokers are as such. You have uh, the word Joker on each side, but you also have uh, my logo and my name here, Chris Ramsey. And the reason I did that is, once again, a bit of a selfish reason, but first of all, these are identical, so you can use these uh, in any you know, sort of magic trick where you would need a duplicate, but also, uh, for me, it's a bit of a calling card. And it's, you know, it's not just my logo. I know on Memento Mori's, I had my logos of the Jokers, and, you know, people could replicate it or whatever. I want to put my name on these. Personally, when I'm out working, this is also, I don't have business cards, so this is kind of like my business card. I just hand him a joker and be like, here, Google me. You will also get two extra cards, no ad cards here, uh, but I chose to go with a duplicate four spades, uh, four spades, four spades being my favorite uh, card in the deck, and as well as a blank card. And for those of you who have purchased Voodoo, my favorite sort of walk around go-to trick that I came up with, uh, link in the bio if you guys wanna check out Voodoo, if you wanna you know, practice it yourselves or perform it for yourselves. The reason I incorporated these is so that I can perform Voodoo in my sets and I don't need any extra decks. All I need is, uh, is that duplicate and that blank card and I'm good to go for a performance of Voodoo, which is really, really sweet. Um, but you can also, you know, very well do color changes with the blank card or any other routine. Uh, even Omni deck is something I do a lot of. And so I'll use the blank card to write something on that. They're very simple to incorporate in many, many various sort of different types of routines. The rest of the deck comes in a very specific order. For those of you familiar with uh, Juan Tamariz and his work, this comes in sort of a variation of that stack, obviously. All I would have to do is cut it somewhere and you know be good to go. So for those of you in the know about this, you won't have to shuffle it to get it to this order. That's the order it comes in. For those of you who don't uh, work with this order, uh, that's completely fine. You know, it just looks like a shuffle deck of cards in that case. But for those of you who do, it's it's kind of it's kind of really fun to be able to just open a deck of cards, not have to go through a, a whole ritual before uh, before getting into this order. It's kind of for you guys, but also for me because when I work, I like starting in stack, and then eventually, you know, the stack just sort of gets jumbled after about 20 minutes of play. Uh, and then I'll go into other things such as voodoo. That uh, That is the order it comes in. Let's now have a look at the court card. The court cards look like so. Here are the queens. The court cards I decided to keep standard. The only thing that's different, as you guys can notice, is uh, the color scheme. The color scheme is just a nice sort of callback to the back of the cards with that light gray and that sort of goldish yellow, but I really wanted the pips and the indices to remain absolutely the same because I didn't want people to be confused uh, when you know when you're when you're giving them something to peek at, let's say you're doing like a peek or something, you can look at a card. I didn't want them to get confused, so I wanted these to be, you know, very prevalent and very easily easily recognizable as uh, these cards are meant to be used and, and performed with. Uh, so they all follow that sort of same color scheme. I wanted the standard faces for this uh, specifically. I could have gone custom. I could have put my face on one of them. I could, but I, you know, I, I got my name on the Joker's already. I think that's more than enough. And on the Tuck case. Uh, these cards are meant to be played with. They're meant to be used by everyone. And uh, I think, I don't know, I just wanted them to be normal. A normal looking deck of cards with a little bit of a twist, that's it. So those are the face cards. Everything else in this deck is completely standard. Uh, aside from one card, aside from the Ace of Spades, everything else is standard in the Ace of Spades. Uh, my favorite deck, my favorite card in the whole deck, obviously, um, because it is stamped with that first. And by the way, 
Uh, there's another reason this is first playing cards. These are the first cards in USPCC history to have that foil stamping all the way to the edge of the card. And that's one of the reasons uh, this took so long is because they had to do that testing process and that process is an extra process which is shipped outside of the USPC and then back to USPC uh, for final coating and embossing. This is, uh, this is the first time that's ever been done. Equally the first time anyone's ever printed um, foil stamp on the face of a card with using USPCC. And so that is a really cool feature, just a simplistic ace. I just love the way that looks. It's just super classy and great for photos. And this deck, lovely things about this deck is that I love photography and this is just a really aesthetically pleasing deck of cards if you wanna take photos. Like even right now, look at the framing here. I could screenshot this and throw that on my Instagram grid. That is just, it just looks great. Cards Faro very well. So they were cut upside down, which are non-traditionally. So if you, if you put them face up or face down, whatever way you wanna do them, but they will Faro from the top down very nicely. And now they're out of stack, obviously. But they Faro either way. So traditionally or non-traditionally, once they get worn in, they Faro either way. Here's a, one of those giant fans, look at that. How cool is that? Baby. The stock is a crushed uh, bicycle stock. So it is a bicycle, not a B stock, which makes them a tiny bit thinner, but they're not like, they're not super thin. Let me turn this down just a little bit here. So they're thinner, but they're not incredibly thin. They're not so thin that you, uh, you know, that you don't want to use them. They're just thin enough that you can get that really nice and easy pinky count. You can spread them out nicely. Lapal spreads are brilliantly beautiful with these. Uh, but just for the fact that these are kind of thin, the Lapal spreads look really nice with that. Easy to uh, anti faro if that's something you're into as well. Not so easy for me. Uh, not bad, not bad. And uh, good for cardistry as well, obviously. They, they're they playing cards, so any playing cards are really good for cardistry. They just look nice and classy, but have that modern feel to it. See if I can pull off that little water bend that I've been practicing. Uh, not bad, still do some work. These are uh, the first playing cards, and that is your first look at them. They look good, man, they feel good. And one of the things that I really love, I had two of these decks sent to me by USPC. This one I kept sort of intact. I didn't want to really touch and play with. And the other one I just wore out. I used every day, I threw in my pocket, sweaty hands, everything. And they still handle really well. The feel is very comparable to the Memento Moris. And I, I think that's the closest I, I could say. It's, they're not as thin as the Knights. They feel more like the Memento Moris. So I can't wait for you guys to pick these up. Well, you have picked them up. I can't wait for them to arrive and uh, for you guys to handle them and feel them as well as the, uh, the tuck case and, and see all the beautiful pictures and videos you guys are gonna put up and be sure to tag me in them at chrisramsey 52 on Instagram or on Twitter and uh, you know I'll repost some of those for sure. There you go, guys. That's it. All right, guys, that was it for the first playing cards review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed Obi. Uh, Obi enjoyed it. These cards will be probably shipping out, starting to ship out next week. They're in packaging currently. Obi's just knocking stuff over. So these cards will be packaged um, as we speak and they will be shipped, starting to ship out next week, which means if they're shipped out to you, you will be prompted on your PayPal with a tracking number, uh, which will then lead you to where that package is in the world and uh, on its way to you. So guys, thanks again for watching this video. Like this video. If you did, subscribe if you're new here, and we'll see you on the next video. Oh, peace.